Thank you very much. Thank you so much, dear friends. I'm very happy to be with you and uh, to tell you that I'm one of you. Uh, I am a former head of state. Uh, I was running Bulgaria as a president, democratically elected by Bulgarian people between 2012 and 2017. I'm very proud I served with Obama and not with Trump. Um, I've been uh, talking to everybody who is anybody on the planet. Uh, but I'm one of you because I was a bit of a different politician. I was a manager, I was starting up businesses, I was growing businesses, I was creating thousands of working places, I was one of the top managers in the region, I was working for very big American and German funds and companies, uh, I was a minister of modernization, uh, I was gastarbeiter uh, for eight years working in Germany, I speak also German, in Frankfurt am Main, uh, and uh, just went there with my small Lada, I was living half of my time in uh, communism and half of my lifetime in democracy, so I could make a difference what it was to live in a super centralized system and what it is to be free. Uh, and most importantly, of course, um, in another life, I'm telling you a secret, I was computer programmer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and by the way, <laughs> You go back, uh, you, you go back to uh, back in time, and uh, uh, when I was 18 years old, uh, just uh, finishing my high school at uh, the mathematics uh, gymnasium in Blagojevgrad, which is very close to Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria, uh, there was the first national competition on computer programming, and I was number one in my country. Very proud. <laughs> Then, of course, I started the Technical University, become a computer engineer. Guess what was my diploma work? Artificial intelligence. And guess who was believing back in time when I ended up? That was in 1989. Who believed that this is going to happen? Very few guys. But I was very proud to have my diploma work on artificial intelligence. And then I became a gastarbeiter in Germany. My life changed and switched many times. Uh, I become a manager, I become an entrepreneur, I become a minister, I was a president. And probably the most important time of my life and the most important goal of my life is just starting. Just starting because uh, whenever I was, I always believed that there is a sense and there has to be a sense of what you do. You need to know what do you stand for uh, and you need to be ready to defend what you believe is right. And I'm here tonight also to listen to you. Of course, you're going to listen to me. I'll ask all the questions. But most importantly, I'm here to listen to you because I really want to be one of you and continue what it really makes sense. To continue supporting it, continue making it possible. And uh, because I believed that blockchain makes huge sense for my country, but also for humanity, as a head of state, I was the founding father of the Bulgarian Blockchain Association. Yes. <laughs> and also, uh, by the way, when I finished my job, um, then I was so proud to start helping a lot of young, very talented people uh, who believe in blockchain, who are putting their talent, who are putting their efforts. Just amazing young guys. I started helping them in order for them to see a horizon of what they believe is right and what they believe can do. And actually, I became one of, let's say, supporting team of a very interesting project. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now just for a minute without advertising. But a number of very young, talented Bulgarian people I, I admire so much just decided using the blockchain technology uh, to compete uh, with Airbnb and uh, block, uh, bookings.com and they made a project that is the first in the let's say travel industry and accommodation industry as a whole totally based on a blockchain uh, that is called Locktrip and Locktrip today um, is in the world rankings of uh, blockchain based projects uh, is ranking one of the most uh, let's say top 200 projects. Uh, it's moving up, it has accommodated 400,000 hotels, 
It's now going to link with 900 airlines and it is having just very simple goal to work for trust, as you all guys do with the blockchain, and to help people becoming more competitive, companies becoming more competitive by getting another platform for making business that could be more transparent, more efficient and cheap. And those guys are just making a miracle. I'm so happy. I'm actually, I'm not leading them. They lead me into the understanding how can we really change the world. And they're trying to do so. So I have two important things to tell you tonight. And the one of them is what I think is going on in the world. <laughs> because I think it's important. We need to share our understanding. Where are we and where are we heading to? Uh, and the second most important thing for me tonight is to tell you what I believe I can do, what I see in the blockchain industry, and what can we do together so that this is going really to have an impact. What's going on in the world today? I was a politician, I was a manager, I'm an engineer, I was talking to everybody who is anybody on the planet, from the Obama 16 meetings, Merkel at least 30 meetings, everybody who is anybody, Chinese president, Russian president, just name them, all of them. And as an engineer, not as a politician, but as an engineer, as a manager, as someone who wants to point at the problem and solve the problem. Because the only way to solve a problem is to point at this problem. Unfortunately, many politicians today do not point they play with people's fears, they play with the problems, but they're not bringing workable solutions. They're not facing the problems in order to really solve them in a sustainable way. Unfortunately, I saw that the political solution sometimes has no meaning at all. There is so much inflation, and what you guys believe is a political solution. Back in time when it was difficult, when there was a crisis, when there is no other way, there is no other hope, politicals are coming together and taking a political decision. And that was the decision. In thousands of meetings I've seen talking to politicians, it was hard for me to realize that actually in many, many, many occasions, political decision today is no decision at all. We are facing so many problems, so many crises, and we are not capable of solving even one of them. We just register, we play, we point. Just look at Syria. I remember seven years ago, politicians and myself, we were saying we are concerned. Six years ago we said we are very concerned. Five years ago we were more and more and more concerned. But to be concerned is not enough. When 300,000 people are dying and the whole region is dis destroyed. And the problem is that as I was a part of the United Nations Security Council, I was having speeches all over the place. It was very difficult for me to realize that actually institutions today are more weak than you can imagine. Institutions today, I don't think they remember what they have been built for. And what do they stand for? Uh, to just to tell you the truth, I believe that to be a president of a country is to be a moral compass, to be the very best representative of your nation. To be a president of a country, I don't think, is to present yourself as a very strong man or a very rich man who has a nice wife. I don't think that today people who really rule the world really remember even what was the American dream all about. Because at the end, the American dream all about was not of being rich, but it was about being free and having the chance. And anyone has the chance too. As I talk to all of them, I really made my own opinion what's going on and let me tell you very briefly what do I believe goes on in the world today because this is very important for all of you to plan because behind every success 
you need to have the right plan to succeed and the right approach to succeed. And that's what I want to talk a bit about the blockchain industry. The point about what's going on in the world, it seems like that. There was a world order that was created after the Second World War. The Second World War, let me be a bit blunt and tell you something. When there is a global war that is burning the planet, 50 million people are dying, I don't think that anyone from the political elite back this time could point himself to be an amazing winner. Yes, some of them were winners, some of them were losers. But if you burn the planet, the system failed. After the Second World War, as they knew they failed and they burned the planet, the political elite started thinking about a very simple value that is bringing all of us together and we all believe in too. And if there is a sense of life, if there is something that unites anybody on the planet, it's this magic word called peace. And they started building peace. And peace is only possible if you have rules that apply to everyone and institutions that keep the rules alive. And those who actually break the rules, they need to be punished, sanctioned, and one on the other way. And they started building up. For example, Churchill built the Council of Europe, where 47 European countries are coming together. United Nations, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So peace, to me, means rules. The very strong foundations of peace in Europe were the Helsinki Accords, back in 1975, which, by the way, were initiated, one of the initiators was the Soviet Union. Together with all the other countries, they came together and they made a strong foundation of peace. And then, after 2014, you know what happened. All those things were blown away. They do not exist anymore. So we are now in a very different phase of development. What has been created as a world order after the Second World War, unfortunately today is put under question, in many years does not function, the world is changing. So we lost the world order after the Second World War, and we need to create a new order for a new world to come in the 21st century where you have a multilateral world with a very different shift and balance of power. And Asia is the continent of 21st century and the balance of power is moving and that's all fine. We understand also after the so-called Arabic Spring that actually European unions, for example, European leaders failed to understand, but also Francis Fukuyama failed to understand that actually not everyone has to become a democratic country. And we need to be tolerant to different systems and different nations that want to organize themselves in different ways. But all of us want to live in peace. And because of that, it is very important to understand that we are now in a very dangerous phase of development that could be lived also, be, be, you can synchronize with the, what happens with the blockchain industry, but also what happens to the world. And I want to make just a very clear uh, synchronization of both. The situation today is that we are in a transition period of a one world order we lost to another new world order which is still not there. And in this transition period, as in any transition period in human history, you have a lot of crisis, a lot of strong winds, hurricanes, storms. It is very unstable. We record a record number of refugees, terrorist attacks, uh, regional crisis, because of the simple reason that institutions are weak, they do not reflect anymore of what it has to be. But the new institutions are not in place because the politicians are incapable of regulating. When I talk to all of them, I just was telling myself, look at this, this, all of those guys. And I was just dividing them into two groups. Those who pretend to be very strong leaders. And the other ones I valued 
not as strong, but as a wise leaders. And always wanted to make the difference. This guy is strong, very strong, very strong, but this guy is wise. If you look back into the history, there were so many strong leaders. Napoleon was very strong, but after him, Europe was burning. Alexander the Great was extremely strong. Young leader, very talented leader. After him, the planet was burning. When I see strong leaders that are actually running the way of their countries in a such, you know, one-man show way, then I start really to get worrying about what's going on in the world. But what could be the program of a strong leader? What could be the content? What's the sense of being not just the president, but the strong president? To me, is the wisdom. The success of a president is not measured by the rating, is not measured by his strength, is not measured by if you occupy your neighbor or if you destabilize the world. The strength of a president and the success for a president is measured by the success of ordinary people. A wise president is educating, modernizing, giving freedom, giving hand, integrating, because through integration only you can succeed. And not if you put trade barriers, pressure, and even arrogantly say, I don't care about yours, I just want to have a deal. And a deal has to be a win-win. You have to give a hand in order to be given a hand. And that's what we're missing today in the world. So making it very clear to you, politics today fails to regulate and fails to bring rules and strengthen institutions so that we could be safe at least look with let's say clarity that we are bringing peace and not just peace but a lasting peace on the planet for the 21st century and here is the problem when i talk to all the big guys on the planet who really today bring a horizon and they're not politicians i call them the dreamers i call them the entrepreneurs those are those guys who really changed the planet in an amazing way. One of them created the blockchain technology. Recently, I talked to Eric Schmidt from, uh, from, from Google and asked him, how do you see the world in 2030? I said, Mr. President, you know, by 2030, we at Google believe that if today the working place is the computer and the computers are networked, by 2030, the working place will be the human brain and human brains will be networked. Today you want to call someone, you need to push the button. In 2030 you want to call someone, you think about talking to him. Recently I talked also to probably the guy who mostly changes the planet today, for me, and his name is Masayoshi San. SoftBank, you know, a legendary investor who made in Yahoo from 10 million, 10 billion, and also now one of the major investors in Alibaba. And Masayoshi San was saying, you know, I invest $100 billion fund just in one thing, and that's artificial intelligence. And I will tell you, what do I want to achieve by 2030? He said, you know, coefficient of intelligence of a human being could be measured. And usually, normally, it's 70. If you're very smart, very well educated, it's 100. Einstein's coefficient of intelligence was 200. Guess how much will be the coefficient of intelligence of machines? 10,000. That's what he says. I'm not saying that. That's what he was telling me. So if the machines, uh, and even lately I talked also to the boss of Bosch, it's a huge German company, 370,000. He was telling me, we do have a camera that is looking much better than human eyes. A Masayoshi son uh, says we have artificial and that's much better than them. So where are we heading to? Are we going into a situation where those dreamers that are changing in an amazing way in the world. This is happening. Nobody can question that. It is obvious to me, and that's my worry. It's obvious, and I'm so happy that in the next 10 years, everything is going to change. And blockchain is one of the major drivers of that. The way we work, the way we pay, the way we travel, the way we communicate, everything is going to change. 
the question to me is very simple one. Where are the politicians? What can we do? Because there is one very good and one very bad scenario. As everything is going to change, who's going to regulate that it's going to be fair? And the point is very simple. For example, I listen to the United Nations. They're telling me uh, the rise of the machines is going to bring another 1.6 billion people on the planet to be unemployed. But if uh, they don't see a hope, if they don't see a horizon, are they going to burn the planet? Of if today in Europe we have a 5 million euro migration, 5 million people, is it going to be a billion? Because they have no hope. And here is the point for me. In 10 years' time to the future, I don't care what is the name of some of the presidents today, because I don't think they contribute to rules and regulations that bring a lasting peace, hope, and horizon to any one of us. But I care who's coming next. And if the next presidents of major states start talking about regulation for artificial intelligence, for weapons, for blockchain, for whatever it is, then you will know we are on the right way to create the basis and the platform for a sustainable, peaceful, and human development. And if we just see strong men running around, then we're in trouble. And in 10 years, we're coming to huge trouble. And now on the other side, blockchain. I was very excited about blockchain. We created the Bulgarian blockchain organization. I watched very carefully what's going on in the world. And even I started dreaming as one of you. Why not? Because corruption is such a major problem. And actually, we see so many strong leaders running the world. Just point to me one strong man in human history, one nationalist, one populist, who really solved corruption. Talking about corruption first. But is there a way to solve it? Why not try blockchain? Because blockchain is a symbol of transparency and trust. Speaking about who is manipulating which elections, why don't we bring blockchain on the table? Because there is no way to manipulate. Speaking about listening to people, why don't we bring solutions on a government level, blockchain-based, that can make sure that people know who are you talking to and what they're getting? And I started pushing in Bulgaria, by the way, as one of the politicians who, who can do that. How can we make e-voting based on blockchain? How can we make payments uh, how can we try to regulate? How can we link it to the stock exchange? And I saw how difficult it was. And I know that it takes a lot of attention and time. And here is my last and very important point to all of you. Now, what happens to blockchain is something very simple. If you look globally, it is like this. In 2017 and 2018, we had thousands of new companies coming on the market with great ideas, with projects <coughs> based on blockchain. People's attention, investors' attention, has been moving up and up and up and up. Those two years have opened out many eyes and many ideas, what can we do? And here and now blockchain is reaching a very critical point, and it takes any one of us to understand and to act. One is to raise people's attention. Totally different is to deliver results that are visible for millions of people. They can say, not investors and not leaders, but millions of people can say, it works. It works perfectly and it works for us. So now, the blockchain-based projects are facing a critical phase. And we need to make sure, as we believe that blockchain can change the world, or many things in the world, and I believe that companies who started up based blockchain-based projects 2017 and 2018, 10 years in the future, 
will be as important as the Googles and the Apples and the Amazons today. Could happen. Remember where those companies that are based on all technologies, internet technologies, were 10 years ago. But as I believe this could happen, my point is that the time has come for all those projects who raise attention to really start delivering results so that the industry can flourish. And this is one very major thing. And believe me, it's difficult. I follow some of the projects that come to my country. Some of them in, are in La Token based. You can watch them. You can see them. And you guys, we need to work hard in order to make it uh, an industry. But the other thing is, of course, regulate. And here is my last point. What we see today that very capable companies with products that are based on blockchain feel insecure. We cannot guarantee proper funding. Banks are just, in a way, pretty arrogantly saying we're not interested. Capital markets, it's difficult. And because of that, what we also see is that some of the companies are just moving like nomads because some countries really arrogantly say we're not interested. But some others believe that blockchain could make a difference. And uh, we see how companies are moving from one country to another country to a third country just to make sure that they're understood and somebody believes in. Because there is no way to prosper if you don't keep to rules, but when the rules are not existing. There is no way to prosper if there is no environment. And the symbol of environment is the regulator, which in some areas are not existing. So I came here tonight to tell you that we have a lot to do, that I'm one of you, that I will listen very carefully, uh, and I have certain capabilities as a member of a lot of international organizations to push the case, to make it as a case, and coming back to what I said to the beginning. If you want to solve a problem, you need to point at the problem. So let us point at the problems tonight so that we can probably solve them in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.